In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Microsoft Entra Protected Actions and show you how they can be used to trigger the evaluation of conditional access policies when a particular task is performed within the directory. This allows you to specify additional security measures when an administrator executes a specific task. This video is demo orientated and I'll show you how a conditional access administrator can view policies from anywhere, but only create, update and delete a policy when working from the London office. Let's get started. Before we can start talking about protected actions, we need to understand authentication context. Now, authentication contexts provide a method of actually getting a conditional access policy to be evaluated. So what we can have is an event that triggers an authentication context, which in turn gets a particular CA policy to be evaluated. And what can we do in the CA policy? Well, anything we like. So we could actually ask for increased assurance. So has someone agreed to terms of use? Has someone done MFA? We could do that. We could allow an action or we could completely block it based on all sorts of different parameters, such as the network location, whether they're using a compliant device, who the user is, and so on. So all the conditional access goodness is there. What we're just doing is triggering it using this authentication context. The authentication context in turn is triggered by an event. And one of the events you can use to trigger an authentication context is when a particular web page is accessed, a website can send up an authentication context request to Entra ID, which in turn triggers the evaluation and conditional access. And you can do that in SharePoint. You can do that in SharePoint using sensitivity labels. And that's a really nice, useful feature. Now there are protected actions. And what protected actions allow us to do is when a particular permission is used in the directory, we can actually trigger an authentication context, which in turn triggers the evaluation of the CA policy. I think the best thing to do is to get in and have a look at a demo. Okay, so I'm gonna start off going to the portal and I'm gonna sign into the portal as just an ordinary user. And this is my user, James. Now, you can block ordinary users from logging into the portal. But in our particular environment, I haven't got that blocked. So we're going to sign in as James. We need to supply James's password. And we'll also need to do MFA for James. And he's using the Authenticator app to get a code for that. So we're going to put his code in and verify him. And now we're going to go to conditional access and see what we can see. So we come into conditional access and it says you don't have access to this data. So that's the overview that we don't have access to. What about if we go to policies? No access to policies. So as an ordinary user, we can't see any of the conditional access information. So let's progress on and let's try accessing this again, but this time as a conditional access administrator. So I'm gonna come in this time as John and John is a conditional access admin. So John, I'll put his password in and he's using a FIDO2 key as second factor. So he's gonna to touch the key. It's gonna read his fingerprint and confirm that he's provided the second factor. So now we're in and we go over to protection, we go to conditional access, and what we can see is, yes, we can view the overview. We go to policies, uh, we can see the policies, we can create a new policy, so that's good. And what we want to do is make this a little bit more challenging. So John is a conditional access administrator and he can actually manage conditional access from anywhere. What we want him to be able to do 
is read conditional access from anywhere, but only update conditional access. We only want him to create or delete conditional access if he's working from the London office. And we could make it a little bit more sophisticated. We could say from the London office using a secure administrative workstation. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? Well, what we need to do first of all is have an administrator capable of doing that. So I've just gone on to another uh, version of the portal as Tor. So I'm going to go down to protection, conditional access, and I'm going to go in here to authentication context. Now I'm going to create a new authentication context and you can give an authentication context a friendly name. And this will be the name that is seen in the UX. So I'm gonna call that London only. The actual identifier is C4 and the C1 to C25. So we can create 25 authentication contexts in the directory. So I'm going to actually save that one. And now the next job is to associate a policy with that authentication context. So when that authentication context gets triggered, what policy are we going to run? So we need a suitable name, so I'm just going to paste that in there. I'm going to apply this policy to a particular user. And my user is going to be in here, John, and it's going to be John Williams. So we'll select John Williams. And now, uh, we've selected John Williams for this policy to apply to. Now, normally you'd probably use a group in here. In my dev environment, I always use users because I don't want to have to remember which user is in which group. The other thing you should always do is put an exclude in and exclude your break glass accounts from policies, but I'm not going to do that here. So this policy will apply to John Williams. So we then go to the target resource. Now, normally it would be the policy applies if John Williams is attempting to access a particular application. But instead of using an application here, I'm going to go to authentication context. So it's now saying this policy will apply if John Williams triggers the London authentication context. Okay. So what do we want to happen? Well, we're gonna set a condition. We're gonna set a condition saying this policy will apply for all network locations, excluding, and we're gonna choose London. Well, this is sort of typical, our network administrator uh, put in here, UK office. Well, we only have one UK office and that's in London. So we're gonna choose that one. So we select the UK office, and then we need to actually select the grant. What are we going to do? And what we're going to do is we are going to block access. Now let's think about this. So if user John Williams triggers the London only authentication context from any location except London, block access. So that's what our conditional access policy is actually going to do. So we'll create it and turn it on. So we've now got that created. Okay, if this video is helping you learn, please help to promote my channel. Like the video, click subscribe and ring that bell to get notified. So our next job is to figure out how we trigger that authentication context. And that we do under protected actions. So we go to roles and administrators, protected actions. And what we do is we add a protected action. And what we're going to do is say that for certain permissions, we want to trigger a particular authentication context. And our permissions we're going to choose are going to be the ones related to conditional access. So if we go to update, create, or delete conditional access, right? So we'll add those in. We're going to trigger a particular authentication context and that authentication context is going to be the London only authentication context. 
which in turn will trigger the evaluation of the conditional access policy we just created. So let's save that. So we're going to, to save that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually do some testing. So we can now evaluate and see how this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the portal again, and I'm going to go in as my user, John Williams. So password in, and again, remember it's MFA and it's using a FIDO2 key. So we're going to put in our FIDO2 key. We'll just touch the security key here and we should be in, which we are. And the next thing is we're going to go to conditional access and we can see the policies. OK, uh, oh, we can actually create a new policy as well. Is that what we wanted? Well, yes, it is. All right. If we're in the London office and we are at the moment. Right. Let's move John out of the London office and see what happens. So we're going to go across and we're in a different environment and we're going to do exactly the same thing, i.e. going to the portal. We're no longer in London. And so we're going to sign in. Once again, we use our FIDO2 key. So we touch the key, reads our fingerprint and lets us in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into um, protection and I'm going to go down to conditional access and I'm going to look at the policies and I can see them. All right, let's uh, go and edit a policy. And it looks as though we can do it, except the save is grayed out. And if we look at it, it says editing is protected by an additional access requirement. Click here to re-authenticate. So I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is actually go back and I'm going to go and create a new policy. And again, it's telling me the selected action is protected by an additional access requirement. Do you wish to continue? Well, of course we do. We want to do our work. But what happens? It says you can't access this right now. So we are prevented from actually creating a new policy, editing, and if we tried, we'd be prevented from deleting, except if we're in the London office. Thanks for watching this session to the end. Now you know how protected actions can be used to further secure administrative tasks. Please leave comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and keep learning. I'll see you next time in the cloud. Thanks for watching my channel. Subscribe for more free training. You might like to join me for my Identity Masterclass. Hopefully, see you soon.